everybody. This is my review of Book of Boba Fett, Episode 4. So far, I've really enjoyed the show, but I haven't felt like it's reached Mandalorian levels of greatness yet. But overall, this fourth episode was my favorite episode of the show so far, and I think the best episode by far. The show has been a really slow burn up until now, and this is finally the episode where all the threads come together and it feels like um, we're getting to the end of the setup and we can really move forward with the story from here. And uh, I absolutely loved it. There are so many great scenes and great moments in this episode. So let's talk about the good stuff. I want to start with the performances and the characters because this episode did a lot for the characters that um, that was kind of missing in previous episodes. Starting with Tamura Morrison, he was great in this episode. He takes a ton of simple lines that could be really bland, forgettable, or cheesy and elevates them. Um, we've talked a lot about his line delivery, but I just think it's so great. And he has a magnetic quality and a gravitas behind him that makes you want to watch him. Talking about the character of Boba Fett, this episode provided a lot of much needed character development. It provided the one main thing I've been asking for since episode one, the one main thing Boba Fett was missing, the one main thing this whole show was missing, which was a motivation. This episode provides Boba with the motivation, albeit a bit of a messy one. It's there, but it's a little convoluted. It's a little tough to see, but if you try to analyze it, if you try to look a little deeper, What's actually there is some really well done character work and some really good ideas. So diving into that, I love how, first of all, he's sick of being a bounty hunter. He's sick of being double crossed. He's sick of being treated unfairly. He's sick of putting his life on the line for employers who don't care about him and who betray him easily. Um, there's a line where he says he wants revenge on Bib Fortuna. Um, that line confused me at first because I wasn't sure what he was referencing because Bib Fortuna didn't betray him in this show that I remember. But I think that's a reference to the War of the Bounty Hunter comics that happened, um, I think, later, later 2021, because there's a moment where Bib Fortuna betrays Boba and puts a bounty on Boba's head, even though Bib Fortuna was uh, employing Boba. And I think that's what Boba is talking about and what he's referencing when he says that um, he wants to get revenge on Bib Fortuna for betraying him. But I love that. I love how his escape from the Sarlacc pit was his metaphorical rebirth. His entire life, Boba has been alone, but in his time with the Tuscans, he learns the value of community and of being part of a family. The Tuscans are really the first time he's ever been a part of a community that actually respects and appreciates him. Um, one of his core memories we see over and over is him looking out the window of Camino, seeing Django leaving him. Boba didn't get the love that he needed from his father, and his father died when he was young. He resorted to revenge. He joined a group of bounty hunters who didn't respect or care about him. We saw that in Clone Wars. But when he joins the Tuscans, they teach him the value of tolerance. They teach him the value of respect. They teach him these values that he never had before that he brings into his leadership as Daimyo of Mos Espa. Um, when his tribe is wiped out, Boba is lost. He resorts to revenge at first against the Nikto Biker Gang, which I love. But he knows that he can't go back to being a bounty hunter. He's a changed man from his time with the Tuscans. And he can't go back to just being alone as a bounty hunter again. The old Boba would never have saved Fennec or partnered with her. But the new Boba has learned the value of respect, of loyalty, of partnership. And the new Boba decides to form this community around himself as the daimyo of Mos Espa using the skills he learned from the Tuscans. Um, so I love all that. I love how we're starting to fill in the gaps and really explain and give Boba that motivation and really dive deeper into his character, which is something we've never done before. So I love everything that they're doing. I love seeing how important this event was, how important the Tuscans were to him and how they really changed and influenced him. So I love all that. The final piece of the puzzle, the one thing I feel is missing to make this character development complete and to really fill in and satisfy his motivation is that we need what Boba's goal is as Daimyo. We need to know what he actually wants to do as the crime lord. Does he want to rid the streets of crime and free Tatooine? Does he want to help the Tuscans take back Tatooine? We still need that final missing piece to solidify all this and then to fully establish Boba's motivation. And I'm just hoping that they can provide that missing piece in the future episodes of the show. Um, I love what they've been doing so far. As long as they provide that last piece and really bring it all together, I'm going to be really happy with the character development in this show. Moving on to Ming-Na Wen as Fennec Shand. Uh, she's fantastic in this episode. I've been saying in my last few reviews that this show needs to give her more to do. And I'm so glad they did with this episode. She was the standout of the episode for me. She had a ton of great one-liners. Her partnership and chemistry with Boba is awesome. She has some great facial expressions, some great comedic moments, and some great fight scenes. 
Um, so I'm so happy they gave her an expanded role, and I hope that she continues to have this large of a role in future episodes. One thing I love about the character of Fennec Shand in this episode is that she's in constant search of freedom. She wants to be freed from her debts to Boba, and then it's her choice to help him when she does stick around. He offers her to be his partner, but she refuses. She claims that one could never escape the life of a bounty hunter. Um, I love how she only agreed to be Boba's partner after he promised her loyalty and protection, after she learns that she'll have some measure of freedom under him. Um, I'm really curious to see where they go with her character in the future, because we still, as much as we got from her from this episode, we still don't really know her past. Her backstory is really mysterious, um, besides a tiny little glimpse of it in Bad Batch. So um, I think there's a lot of directions they can go with this character, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Talking about just the chemistry and the dynamics between the characters, I wanted to spend a little time talking about the chemistry between Tem and Ming-Na. Their dynamic is subtle. It's not as outwardly comedic. It's not as dialogue driven, but it's just really entertaining. Some of my favorite moments between them were when Boba gets out of the back to tank, the droid says he's fully healed, and Fennec walks up and says, what about the scars on the inside? Or there's lots of moments where she flashes a smile at Boba or just a glance. And you can really read into those glances so much and really um, take a lot out of them. And it's really effective at communicating their partnership. It's obvious they're communicating non-verbally, and it's awesome to see how well they work together. And I just thought their chemistry was on point this entire episode. That brings me to another favorite part of this episode for me, which was the humor. I thought this episode actually had some pretty hilarious moments, which I loved. Things like Boba, after Boba uses the sonic bomb on the Sarlacc, um, he tells Fennec not to push the buttons of his ship. And then Ming-Na's facial expression, if you're watching her, is just perfect during that scene. It's really subtle, but it's hilarious. Or there's a similar moment when Chrysanthemum throws the Trandoshan against the wall of the bar, right as Boba's in frame walking in. And you see him reacting to the fight he just walked in on. And his facial expression is just so perfect. And uh, there's just lots of little touches, little subtle jokes like that, um, which were hilarious. And then there were a lot of funny one-liners and some great banter between Fennec and Boba. And I just thought the humor and their chemistry was just on point and uh, really fun to watch. And I love seeing it in this episode. And I look forward to seeing more of it in the last three episodes of the show. One thing I've been complimenting a lot about this show is the costume design. And I have to talk about it again with this episode. I talked about how cool and how good I thought Chrysanthemum looked before. But one thing I loved about him is they actually gave him some measure of depth in this episode. Um, just a little bit of a tangent. I loved his scene at the bar when he's watching the Trandoshans and he can't contain himself. So he attacks them. His rage is awesome because, of course, in the Star Wars universe, Trandoshans are known to enslave and hunt Wookiees. Um, but the best part of the scene and the reason why that scene is so effective and the reason why you can feel his anger and his rage is the costume design. I mean, I was shocked at the range of facial expressions, the chrysanthemum, I guess it's a mask or the face is able to make. Um, you could tell exactly every emotion he was feeling without him, of course, without him speaking a word. He really does feel like an alien creature. He does not feel like a human in a costume at all. Just the watching his face, the range of facial expressions are just so cool. The range of emotions he's able to portray as a big hairy dude. It's pretty awesome. He's just feels like a real creature. The sense of verisimilitude created with this costume and with the facial expressions and with the performance is absolutely perfect. And it's what every costume is, is aiming for in Star Wars. And they don't always reach it. And this is peak verisimilitude. And I just love the use of his character. And I loved everything with Chris Anton and the way he looks. And he was just awesome in this episode. Another thing I loved, I don't know if this would qualify under costume design or under just like design, but the droids in the kitchen were awesome. I loved the design of them. The one with the knives felt distinctly Star Wars. It felt awesome. It felt right at home in Jabba's palace. The Clatoonians, the Nyctos, the Trandoshans, the Aqualish um, in this episode, especially during the dinner at Boba's palace, all looked amazing. They looked really, really great. And then the Bantha in this episode, I don't think it's costume design, but it just looks fantastic. The way it moves and walks around, even its tongue, it just really felt like a real creature. And it just blew me away how, how real it felt. And that, again, that sense of verisimilitude, especially when like, I don't know why it's this one shot, but when Boba throws the thing and the Bantha turns around to go fetch it, um, it just felt so much like a real creature in that scene. And it looked so real. And just the costume design and then the design in the show is fantastic. And in my opinion, even better than what we've seen in Mandalorian. It looks amazing. 
talking about the production design, I thought the production design was really great in this episode as well. Starting with Mas Espa, I think Mas Espa as a town looks awesome. Also the corridors of Jabba's Palace, Jabba's Hangar, seeing more of Jabba's Palace was awesome, especially the kitchen area. Um, the Sanctuary Bar looked amazing in this episode. The sets are very well done, very well dressed, very well populated. The production design in this show even feels like a step up from Mandalorian. It looks fantastic. Uh, I love that. Talking about the tone of this episode, or I guess the inspirations behind this episode, it was very Star Wars-y in that it's a mesh of a ton of different tones and inspirations. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the cyberpunk in this show, especially the cyberpunk in the beginning when Boba is resurrecting or saving Fennec Shand. Um, I liked it, but I liked it because it was contained to that one location, to that one scene. I don't need to see the cyberpunk all over Tatooine, like with the Vespa gang from last episode, which you know I did not like. I prefer it how it was in this episode, how it was just contained to one location, one scene. So I'm just glad, I'm glad the way they handled that. I'm fine with like a cyberpunk bar or whatever, like what we got in this episode. What I really loved about this episode as well was the gangster godfather influence. This one had the most gangster influence and you really felt it, especially during the dinner scene. It was literally like a crime family godfather scene in Star Wars and I ate it all up. The heads of the crime families and then Boba offering them an alliance, the inner politics of the crime underworld of Tatooine, I ate all of that up so much, and that entire conversation was so well done, so well written. Um, it might be one of my favorite scenes in all of Star Wars. It was just an entirely new flavor for Star Wars. I love the gangster inspiration, and I just loved it so much. I completely ate up that entire scene. It's one of my favorite parts of this episode. It was fantastic. Talking about the direction of this episode, it's really interesting seeing the pattern going on with this show where my favorite two episodes and the best directed two episodes have been the two episodes not directed by Robert Rodriguez. It's too early to tell because we've only seen two of his episodes he's directed and I'm not making any judgments yet, um, but it's just really interesting. It's interesting because I would have assumed that Robert Rodriguez's episodes would have been the best um, before this show. It's crazy. But, um, but this episode was so much better directed than the last one on every level. Kevin Tancheron, I believe, is who directed it. He did some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. before. He was fantastic. Talking about his cinematography, it was beautiful. There were so many scenes that were really well framed. Um, I talked about Boba walking into the bar and he's on the edge of the frame while you see the, um, the Trandoshan hit the wall who was thrown by Chrysanthemum. That or like the framing of Fennec who when she finally jumps into Slave One and then the, hang and then the doors of the ship close on her, but then you see them all the way close on her. That was really well framed or the entire way the dinner scene was shot looked beautiful. Um, the ending scene up on top of the tower at Jabba's palace looked great. The fight scenes were really well shot and you could actually see the choreography for once. Also, one of my favorite shots in all of Star Wars came from this episode, which was this stunning Dutch angle shot where you see Boba's ship coming from behind the Nikto biker gang and just firing down on them and exacting his revenge. And then that Dutch angle and then how you're seeing the Niktos and they don't notice Boba coming, but you see Boba coming. That's just one of my favorite shot Star Wars scenes of all time. That entire scene was so well done. I absolutely loved it. And that scene was made a million times more memorable because of the cinematography. They could have done it in a much blander way, but the way they did it was just so well done and just so memorable and fantastic. I love that scene more than I can express. Talking about the action scenes, I thought this episode was a step up in action from the last one as well. Um, I love seeing Boba exacting his revenge on the Nyctos and the Sarlacc. Uh, I love seeing the Sarlacc in action a little bit. I love Chrysanthemum beating up the Trandoshans. Um, that was a little more brutal than we're used to for Star Wars, which is pretty awesome to see. Um, the standout sequence was, of course, the entire heist, ending with Boba and Fennec barely escaping the Jawa's palace hangar. That scene was well choreographed, well shot, and very thrilling. My favorite moments were seeing Fennec's martial arts skills. It was well choreographed and awesome to see. I think it's the speed at which she delivers blows. It's really cool to see. She has this very quick and agile fighting style that brings a lot of kinetic energy. And I love seeing all that hand-to-hand -hand stuff. And I hope we get a lot more of it in future episodes. The last thing I want to talk about is the story. The best part of this episode, I loved everything they did with the story. Last episode, I loved the story, but didn't love the execution. This episode, I love the story and the execution. Um, let's just run through some of the highlights, some of my favorite scenes. 
Boba saving Fennec was awesome. I love how he sees the like big flash grenades in the distance that were in Mandalorian season one, episode five. I love the direct ties to Mandalorian. Um, I love the filling in of the gaps. Of course, we talked about the entire heist in Jabba's palace was a lot of fun. I thought the droids were pretty funny. Um, I love Boba getting his revenge and then killing the Sarlacc with the sonic bomb. I love that Boba is fully healed, implying that we're done with the flashbacks since we've pretty much filled in all the gaps all the way until Boba's appearance in Mandalorian Season 2. The flashbacks did in a way sort of stall the forward momentum of this show. And as much as I love them, I'm kind of glad they're over now so we can really move forward with the story. I love seeing Chris Anton attacking the Trandoshans. It was cool to see more of his strength. He really is a force to be reckoned with. I love that Boba recruits him. I can't wait to see his role in the next few episodes. I talked about how much I love the entire dinner scene. That scene is just so great. The dialogue is so great. Another great moment between Fennec and Boba is when she glances to him and they, they make eye contact and you can tell, you can read into their expressions. They don't say a word, but you can just tell they're both annoyed because the family heads refuse to ally with them against the Pikes. I love how Boba uses the Rancor to demonstrate his strength. That was a great moment. And then the final scene is the one that got the internet talking. And it was amazing. I love the dialogue. I love the line delivery. I love Fennec saying that credits can buy muscle and then the Mandalorian theme playing. Um, I loved it. It was fantastic. Of course, that probably means we'll see Mando again soon, maybe in the next episode. I cannot wait for that. It now feels like the pieces are all in place. We're moving into the second act. I guess actually more, this is now the final act. We're moving into the final act. And it's time to actually see some great action, to see the story continue, and to see this war between Boba and the Pikes. And I cannot wait. I'm so excited. This episode revived all my hype about this show. This was by far my favorite episode. This episode was amazing. I cannot wait to see where it goes. This is what I wanted out of this show. This is a 10 out of 10 episode for me. It ranks up there with some of my favorite Mandalorian episodes. I really, really loved it that much. It had the perfect balance for me of character stuff, of humor, of action, of emotion. I loved it, um, and I cannot wait for the next episode. Hopefully the next one can deliver. Please let me know. What did you think of this episode? Did you love it as much as me? Do you have any theories? Are there any Easter eggs I missed? Anything interesting? Please let me know in the comments if you're on YouTube. But remember the primary platform. This is meant to be an audio podcast. So the primary platforms are meant to be Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever you prefer, Overcast, CastBox. So if you're on one of those, first thing in the description is a link to a form to submit your thoughts, a topic, a question for me to discuss on the show. There's also an email in there where you can email me your thoughts if you have something longer to say that doesn't fit into the form. Or there's a voicemail if you want to submit a recording of yourself talking, and I'll play it on the show and address your theories, your thoughts, your speculation, whatever you have to say. Um, So thank you so much for listening and have a good day.